Hey, what's up? I'm John from Coding Addict, and welcome to another JavaScript Nuggets video. In this video, we're going to cover how to set up the bounce functionality in vanilla JavaScript. Effectively, the bouncing is a programming technique used in JavaScript to improve the performance of certain functions that are repeatedly called. The bouncing involves setting up a threshold time for a function, which determines how long to wait before executing that function again. For example, if the user is typing a search query in the search box, we might use the bounce to wait until the user pauses typing before executing the search function. This can help prevent the search function from executing unnecessarily multiple times while the user is still typing. So in this video, we're going to cover the vanilla JS approach. And in one of the later videos, we'll see how we can implement the bounce in React app. Okay, so let's take a look at the vanilla JS setup. In the index.html, surprise, surprise, I have a button with a class of btn, and I have text click me. And then as far as the logic, I select a button with a query selector, I add event listener, I'm listening for click events, and then every time the event fires off, there's a console log, you click me. Let me make this very clear. There's nothing tricky about this setup. This probably is the most straightforward button that you have seen in any of the tutorials. Here's the goal, though. We want to set up the delay logic where we run this functionality, in this case, console log, you click me, only two seconds after the last click. So let's say I click 20 times, and only after that last click, we set up that console log. So that's the goal. How we can start moving in the right direction? Well, we could come up with a callback function, right? It's not going to be surprising if I'll call this the bounce. So we'll say the bounce, that's my function. And in here, I also right away can set up the set timeout. That's in the API, where we can use set timeout, we pass in a callback function, and in how long the functionality is going to run. So let's right away do that. I'm gonna go set timeout. Like I said, it's looking for two things, the callback function. In our case, that's gonna be our console log, and then in how long it's going to run. So let's say in here, I'm gonna go with two seconds. The value is in the milliseconds, that's why we need to go with 2000. And let me grab this console log, set it up over here. And then instead of an animus callback function, we're going to go with the bounce. And I save here. And some of the logic makes sense, but we're still not there yet. So yeah, things are happening with delay. But notice if I clicked seven times, pretty much I have seven console logs. And again, that's not our goal. I only want one log after my last click. And I'm sorry if I keep repeating this, but hopefully this will help you to kind of connect the dots of what we're trying to achieve over here in our Jobify application. So what changes can we implement? Well, with set timeout, we can return the ID. So every time we run set timeout, we actually return ID. And we can use that ID to clear the timeout. See, we're moving in the right direction. You can already see that basically what we want to do is cancel that previous timeout on that last button click. So let's see how it works. First, I'm going to go with const and then timeout ID. I'll set it equal to basically set timeout. You know what, I can actually move this up. So let me set it here. That's equal to set timeout. That's the ID that we're getting back. If you want, we can log that sucker. So let's say here timeout ID. And then let's clear it. Clear timeout. This is what we need to pass in timeout ID. And then lastly, let's just see that we have clicked the button. Otherwise, you might be thinking, okay, he's just messing with me. He's actually not clicking the button. So let's go with hello. So now what you'll see, we won't have any 
logs in a console that are coming from the set timeout because we will clear it. However, we'll be still clicking the button. So notice I keep clicking. So these are those IDs, those timeout IDs, as you can see, it's increasing. So automatically JavaScript will start with, let's say zero or one, I don't remember. And then the number is gonna keep on increasing. So each and every time we'll get a new ID. Now we right away cancel it. You right away cancel that set timeout. That's why we don't see any, you click me. We just see the hello, which means that we are clicking the button. But of course, we're canceling right away this timeout. So now let's put everything together and I'll throw you a mine grenade. You see, what we could do with the bounce is actually return another function. And in that function, we'll do two things. We'll clear out the previous timeout and we'll set up a new one. So let's start by just invoking the bounce. But what we need to keep in mind, since we evoke this immediately, basically when our application loads, we need to return from this the bounce a new function. Otherwise, none of this makes sense. Basically, we'll just run this code. That's it. We'll run it once. We'll just have one and hello. That's it. Because again, now we're not invoking this on every click. We invoke this basically when the application loads. So first, let's go with the return and we return a function. So now from the, the bounce, we return this function. And now this function will be invoked. So again, we come back to the same logic where we have those hellos and then we're clearing out the timeout. But here's what we want to do. I want to remove this, or you know what, I'll leave these ones. I'll remove that hello over here. And we want to construct that timeout ID. The first time we run this, the bounce on that initial load. So we're going to go here with timeout ID. However, I'm going to use let since we'll update that in a second. So let me remove the const here. Let me set up the timeout ID here over here, like so. So we create this new variable. And then what we're going to do, we'll clear out the previous timeout and we'll set up a new one. So let me move these two suckers up over here. So I have console log timeout ID, and then I'll set this one equal to the new timeout. So yes, there was a little bit of refactoring. So let me go over this code. So once the application loads, we run the bounce. Just one time, we run it. We set up here this variable timeout ID. And here I just have extra console log where I basically say, okay, what is the value for timeout ID? The first thing we do with this function that we return is clear out the previous one, whatever it was. And then we set up the new one. And we just come up with that set timeout. And what you'll notice as a result, now let's say if I click 20 times, notice how the ID is changing, but only after the last one, I have this, you click me. Again, I invoke this one once, once the application loads, from that the bounce, I return a new function and I set up the variable. And pretty much every time I'll click on a button, I'll clear out the previous one and I'll set up the new one. And as long as uh, those clicks are happening in those two seconds or whatever time we have over here in this time frame, we'll be clearing out the last one and then setting up the new one, clearing out the last one, setting up the new one. And I can click, I don't know, 10,000 times. And again, the log is gonna happen only after the last click. And of course we can make this uh, more dynamic. For example, I could set up the bounce to accept a function and pass the logic in here. Also, as a side note, we can pass in, in how long it's going to run as well. We can essentially set this one up as a variable, but I'm just going to go with this console log where basically I'll remove it here. So now notice I'm passing this into the bounce, then I'll set up as a function and I'll invoke it over here. Like I said, we can make this more complex. That's really is not the point though here. Our main logic was to delay some functionality, which successfully we're doing. 
So let me click here and check it out. Now, of course, we wait for two seconds. And after the last click, that's where we get the console log. 